Welcome to Season 2, Episode 1 of Chris Cast. My name is Chris Abraham. And uh, today, today's episode is going to be the state of my health. And uh, officially, according to the doctors, my, the state of my health, health is sound. The state of my health is good. But there's a lot to work on. And I'll talk about that after the break. Welcome to Season 2. My name is Chris Abraham. And I'm glad that you're here. Welcome back to Season 2, Episode 1 of Chris Cast. My name's Chris Abraham. I am 50 years old. I am six foot three. I am 350 pounds. Um, in the last few years, I uh, had an event, uh, a heart failure event, uh, that uh, resulted in um, tachycardia, which means my heart was uh, beating so fast that it did not have the power to um, feed my entire body. My lungs filled with, uh, with fluid. I got edema in my limbs, and I was slowly dying. Um, took me even longer because my health insurance hadn't kicked in until like the 15th of January. So I was, for two weeks I was dying. My, I thought it was pneumonia. I didn't know what was up, but... I could barely do anything. And when I went to the doctor, um, I might as well have gone in with a heart attack because they saw me come in. Oh, here's a funny story. I went just to the clinic and the clinic clinician gave me an EKG, asked me if I had driven there. I said, yes. He said, is your car outside? I said, yes. He said, um, well, you have a choice. You can either go to Virginia Hospital Center or Arlington Hospital, but you can't take your car. So you can either take a Lyft or an Uber or a taxi, or I'm going to call the ambulance. So um, anyway, I survived. Um, sadly, I died for three minutes during a, a what's called a cardio version, or uh, I think it was more about an exploration into, uh, I think it was going down my throat, kind of an echocardiogram type of deal, but I died for three minutes and I didn't see my life flash in front of me and I didn't have a near death experience, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, that was January, 2017. Uh, now it's going to be January, 2021. And I've got a completely clean bill of health. Uh, in the meanwhile, my heart had been going in and out of what's called, um, arterial fibrillation, AFib. And I had been getting a series of different types of medication uh, to try to treat it. And I also got a number of these things called cardioversions. And what they are is basically um, the, uh, uh, if you will, the same paddles that one uses to um, stop or cease or try to recalibrate the heart during a heart attack is the same kind of the same kind of theory that's being done in order to reset reboot my heart in order to try to reset it to what's called sinus rhythm which is the natural uh pumping of the heart so um so everything's going great i'm on this amazing drug called uh a tycosin and my heart is in sinus rhythm and um all of my labs are good i don't have diabetes i don't have liver problems i don't have any of those things um the only thing now is that i am uh, 100 to 150 pounds overweight right i should be 180 190 200 225 and instead i'm uh, 350 pounds so the next step is uh um exercise and and weight loss which needs to be done with nutrition 
after the next break, I'm going to talk about uh, the sin that I have. And it's not alcoholism. It is gluttony. So sorry that I spoiled. Sorry about that spoiler. But we'll talk about that after the break. Thanks again. This is Chris Cast, Season 2, Episode 1. It is taking place on the 29th of December, 2020. I'll be right back. Welcome back to Chris Cast. My name is Chris Abraham. This is season two, episode one. Um, okay, well, I've always had problems with. Uh, I was a skinny kid. I was skinny until um, until puberty. Then I became chubby and stocky and all those other words. And but when I hit sixteen uh, or fifteen or even fourteen. I remember, I think it was 14, summer of 14, we lived pretty close to the YMCA downtown Honolulu, and I bought myself a pair of those um, cross trainers that have, um, uh, they're kind of like basketball shoes, they kind of sort of come up on your heel, and they are, um, uh, they're laced with laces, as well as two uh, Velcro uh, uh, tabs. Um, I think they might have been, um, uh, what is it called when you do aerobics? I think they might have been aerobics shoes, because I remember joining, joining a gym and also joining the Y and taking aerobics classes every day. Um, literally in a room full of women doing aerobics in front of a mirror um, all summer long. And uh, when I got back into into high school, I joined JROTC, Junior Reserve Officer Trainers, training um, Army JROTC, and uh, joined Ranger Club which is based on the Army Rangers, which is a special operations corps. Um, and, um, man, my commander, uh, my commanders, Charles Among and Eric O, uh, beat the bejesus out of me. Uh, not physic, not, not by punching me, but by, um, putting us through grueling PT. Um, side straddle hops, which are, you know, um, uh, uh, jumping jacks and push-ups and sit-ups and, and, and runs and, uh, all kinds of training and big humps, which are called, you know, hikes, long hikes with, with, with big packs on our back, wearing, uh, boots and camo. Um, and then I took that PT home with me. And then got even to better shape and then got a girlfriend and joined wrestling and then learned to learn that I loved running and continue to do PT as well as, um, as well as a lot of running. Like I ran from Kaimuki to Waikiki beach and back around, um, around Kahala Avenue, um, every, every night, uh, in, when I was wrestling, I wore uh, silver, uh, you know, those awful, like, going to kill you, uh, silver plastic suits that are supposed to make you lose weight. And then later, even in the Hawaiian warmth, I would wear, uh, I would run dressed exactly like uh, um, uh, Sylvester Stallone, you know, in, um, in Heather Gray uh, sweats, top and bottom. Anyway, so I was pretty fit, and then uh, into college, I rode, and I ran, and I rode, and I ran, and my year abroad, I rode, and I ran. Um, it's pretty awesome, 
And I continued. I can. I, I. I was a bike courier and all the other kind of stuff. So I've got a real base for that. But um, you know, I've always. I've always fought being overweight. Like when I was in peak physical shape, I was 180 to 190 pounds, maybe 200 pounds with muscle. But uh, for most of my adult life, I've been been between uh, 235 and 285. Um, and now I'm 350 at, at 50, and that can't stand. But over the last few years, I've turned my little apartment into very much a uh, a gym. And even though, I mean, I could blame, I could easily blame coronavirus for uh, putting me into a place of, uh, of frustration where um, I would deal with my gluttony, but... Um, Actually, let's take another break. I'll go into my gluttony in, in the next segment because I completely spaced on it when I told you my history. Um, oh, and after after college and 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 so forth, when I lived in D.C. back in the back in my mid thirties, I um, even had a carbon fiber single rowing shell that I would row on the river. And before that, Mark and I in the nineties uh, owned kayaks and would kayak up and down. Uh, the and and I've always been on a bicycle, even when I was in Berlin in 285, you know, pounds. I was still. Can you hear that? I'll talk about what that means in a few minutes. Anyway, so I've always been very active, but now I can't. Now the only X factor is the gluttony and the intensity and just the amount of exercise. So I will deal with that in, after the break. Thank you. I've had a lot of coffee this morning, so that's why I'm talking and speaking so fast. I also don't want to waste your time. Welcome back. My name is Chris Abraham. Uh, this is Season 2, Episode 1 of Chris Cast. Um, I thought I was an alcoholic. Like, my mom and dad were alcoholics, and my, and my mom's mom was an alcoholic, and I believe that my dad's dad was an alcoholic. Um, so I thought I was an alcoholic too. I mean, just by virtue of that. And I didn't really care. Like I didn't pursue AA or NA or well, not NA, but Al-Anon or anything like that. Um, cause it always seemed like when I want to stop, I would stop. And when I want to drink, I would drink. But I think all my friends thought I was an alcoholic cause whenever I was with them, I just drink them under the table. Uh, turns out that because um, alcohol seems to be the trigger for my AFib, and the AFib is the bane of my existence, I gave up um, drinking completely, completely gone dry after my last hurrah with my friend Zandria. Uh, we celebrated with um, uh, at a tapas restaurant um, named Haleo down in Crystal City, and I had a lot of that sangria with her. And after that, uh, I just quit. I didn't want to pop into AFib anymore. So I've been... Hear that? Hear that? I've been sober ever since, and it hasn't bothered me at all. Like, I haven't even had any... Um, I've just avoided the bars. Like, sadly, I really love Taqueria El Poblano, and I really love um, L.A. Bar and all that other kind of stuff. And I, I like grabbing a glass of wine at uh, Idido's, um, etc. I even like, like you know, if I'm going to watch a big uh, Marvel, like, popcorn type of movie, or even out in the cinema, which I don't go to anymore because of coronavirus, 
and because my my cinema buddy uh, Andrew doesn't do anything that's outside of the bubble in terms of coronavirus, which I commend him for. But you know, like if if I were to go to a movie, like let's say Tenet, and go to one of these theaters that serves beer, I would have a couple three beers during the movie. You know, uh, I enjoy that, but it just isn't worth it for me for my health now. After all of that, it turns out I'm a glutton. If you put uh, an infinite amount of beer and wine in front of me, I'll drink an infinite amount of beer and wine. If you put a pizza in front of me, it's really rare that I have one slice and put the rest in the fridge. Um, I'm working really hard developing meal plans and then sticking to portion control. Um, And uh, that is my only thing. Like, I... I'm not going to change my the type of food that I eat very much because I think that I eat healthily. I love my greens and vegetables and stuff, but I also like my eggs and I I put plenty of um of olive oil and butter into things and and I love uh vegetables and I'll have chicken or I'll have ground beef or I'll have steak, but it all comes down now because I know that my uh lab work is fine. It all comes down to the amount. So that is my goal now. I have, I buy deli containers from Amazon and I realize that I only need the big ones for coffee and the really small ones, you know, the ones that you get at the deli for just like schmear. Like if you go there and just get a little, you get, uh, if you're, if you're having a, uh, if you're having with your friends, a um, bagel brunch and it's only like a a handful of your friends and you want to get a a series of different types of smears for the bagels you know those small little um, one or two inch tall little plastic containers that the delis give you those are my portions right so I'll I'll, um, make beans rice ground beef let's say or chicken and all of the kind of stuff I'll um, I'll, I'll add lots of, um, lots of vegetables. I'll cook it up in a big saute. I'll make sure it's all sliced and chopped into a compote, if you will. And then I will let it cool and then put it into these little deli containers. And hopefully that'll stop me. However, I do have my periodic binges. So that's what I'm going to try to do now. That's my only goal In terms of that, I'm still going to have beans. I'll still have rice. I'll still have lentils. I'll still have, um, if you will, grits. And I will have uh, oatmeal. And I'll have uh, various and sundry types of protein, including eggs, etc. But I just will make sure that I don't feed myself brunch three times a day, seven days a week. All right, the next segment is going to be um, workout strategies and um, something I've I've come upon that I really like that I'm going to then supplement with slow jogging. But right now, I think I've got a winning combination, and you'll hear about that after the break. Thanks for being here. Thanks for listening, and I'll be right back. Hey there, this is Chris, episode one, season two of Chris Cast, and I got to tell you that it's all been worth all the crazy money that I've spent on gear because I'm having a lot of fun with it. Um, I bought a ski erg, uh, which is made by, um, which is made by Concept Two. I bought a ski erg years ago, and I've really underutilized it. Right. So it's made me really sad that I uh, would spend a thousand dollars on something that I barely use. However, um, I've gotten back into this book by uh, uh, called Get Fit, Get Fierce with Kettlebell Swings. And it's pretty awesome by a guy guy named Don Fitch. And it's really simple. It says that every hour you take a kettlebell 
and swing it for 90 seconds. Every hour, you do that. Now, I miss, I'll miss an hour and then I'll just push it. What, what Don does is he makes sure that, that the hour moves with him. So let's say he misses an hour. He has a timer set. He misses an hour. The moment he comes up for air, he'll start that 90 seconds and then start the hour again. What I do is I have a little device called a gym boss and I, it's, it's a, um, um, interval training timer and it's pretty cheap. Hey Google, how much does a gym boss cost? Sorry, I don't know how to help with that. Here are other things you can try. Alexa, volume 10. Alexa, how much does a gym boss cost? Amazon's choice is Gym Boss Interval Timer and Stopwatch, black slash blue soft coat. It's $19.95. Thank you. You bet. Enjoy your morning, Chris. Thank you, Alexa. Um, so for $20, you get this little thing that's about the size of a, about half the size of a pager. It's not quite the size of a pager. Um, and you can set it for intervals. And I set it for 30 minutes. Every 30 minutes, it beeps at me. And then every 30 minutes, it sets out and does another interval for two minutes. So uh, 30 minutes rest. And then beep, 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 beep. Then it goes for two minutes and then beep, 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 and it resets for another 30 minutes. I had that set for 99 repeats, and then I have to remember before I sleep to turn it off. Now, here's the perfect system, and I've been really excited about it. I have a treadmill desk. When I'm at the treadmill desk checking my mail or doing client service work or doing business development, I have running shoes on, and on the running shoes, I have... Uh, what's called a stride, S-T-R-Y-D. It is a foot pod uh, made of alien technology, and it communicates with this online virtual uh, cycling and running app called Zwift, Z-W-I-F-T, Z-W-I-F-T. I wear uh, either an, a, 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 um, uh, an arm heart rate monitor, uh, the one that I have, is um oh, what is it called arm heart rate monitor optical uh it is called the socha rhythm plus and or i have a garmin uh dual hrm strap or a polar H10 strap or a uh, ticker, Wahoo ticker X. I have, you know, all three of those. It depends on which is, uh, which I can find mostly. And um, uh, I have also a Fitbit zip on, attached to my, the cuff of my shorts. Uh, and of course I've got my Fitbit, um, uh, uh, I always have my Fitbit Aspire HR on my wrist. I might get another one that uh, that works with um, that works with uh, knowing the floors that you climb. However, so what I do is I stand at my treadmill desk and get work done. While I'm doing that, I put myself into the virtual world, Watopia, and um, just go into, um, I used to, you know, explore Watopia, but I really, I don't want to confuse, um, or mess with Strava because I don't have any way of really, uh, changing my, uh, the, the, uh, vertical or horizontal, the, the, um, uh, angle of attack of my treadmill desk. So I just make myself go round and round and around and around their in-world blue track. And I go for 30 minutes, I go for 60 minutes 
and 60 minutes for me at a, a slow enough speed for me to go and um, and just uh, be able to work while walking is two miles per hour, which I know is slow, but it, it keeps me walking and getting steps. And then right next to my desk is a is the concept to ski erg. And on that attached is um, my uh, my Apple iPod Touch with erg data on there. So every so this is what I do while I'm on the treadmill desk all day long. I have my gym boss set up for thirty minutes rest, ninety uh, two minutes of activity. After the first thirty minutes on the treadmill. And I call that rest because, you know, I want to just keep on walking. When it beeps, I go to the ski erg. And I ski erg as hard as I can. Uh, After having warmed up for, you know, half an hour at two miles per hour, I ski erg as hard as I can for two minutes or fewer because it takes me time after the beep. You know, since the get fit, get, you know, physical book talks about 90, 90 seconds, I add another 30 seconds for transition. So I jump onto the ski erg. I row hard for uh, 90 to 120 minutes. I log that into my Concept2 logbook. And then I move back onto my Strava, uh, on you know onto my treadmill desk that's in Zwift, and continue walking. Then after 30 more minutes, the alarm goes off again. And I get off of my treadmill desk. I step over to my 12, 16, 20, 24 kilogram kettlebell. And depending on how I feel that day, whether I want to just do lots and lots of swings or just work hard, I um, right now I'm doing 12 kilograms because I want to be able to do it all uh, for for as close to 120 seconds every hour as I can. I want to start really light so that And because I'm 350 pounds, there's still a lot of body to move. I don't need all that extra weight just to go ahead and make it a strong workout. So I do that. And then when it beeps at me again, I go back to the treadmill desk. I periodically will take a break to kind of stretch my knees or, or, uh, or, or, you know, uh, chill or have a meal or lunch or whatever. Um, And then in the evenings or in the mornings, I'd like to go outside and do what I call a slow jog, which is basically, you know, uh, 16 uh, minutes per mile, um, really slow, or just take a walk outside or go and do my errands by foot or whatnot. Um, I want to get back into the bicycle too, and maybe to the gym, but I think that the baseline treadmill desk, Every 30 minutes, ski erg. Every 30 minutes, every, sorry, every, every alternate hour, ski erg. Every other alternate hour, uh, kettlebell swing. And then as of January 1st through January 31st, I will be part of the concept to, uh, Team challenge, which means I am also probably going to do between 5,000 and 10,000 meters on the rowing machine, the concept to rowing, uh, rowing indoor rower as well. So those are going to be very busy days and hopefully just not as sedentary, but also hopefully I believe, um, will, will make me very strong, but it'll also be sustainable because none of it will be, um, sprinting or, like really intense weight training over the course. And I also won't deal with the issue of uh, going from uh, cold, you know, like sedentary people who then do intermittent workouts have a tendency to not do enough warm up. But I feel like walking two miles per hour uh, for uh, between each one of these intense workouts is going to allow me to remain warm and, and allow my body not having to go from cold to hot. Um, it's very exciting. I will let you know uh, a couple months down the line to let you know how it's going, but I feel like this is something sustainable. I feel like if I miss one, that's fine. It's only every half an hour over the course of from 7 a.m. until 
uh, 7 p.m. That's 12 hours. And so I can get a lot done during those hours. So let me know what you think about that. Anyway, um, I'll get back to you after the break. I hope you liked my plan. I'll talk to you soon. If you have questions about this stuff, please let me know. Oh, thank you. Hey there, this is Chris Abraham, episode one, season uh, two of Chris Cast. My name's Chris Abraham, and um, that's 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 it. You know, if you have questions about my process, uh, I mean, you know, as much of the work that I can do. I uh, am going to be putting onto Strava, so you'll be able to see, um, except for the kettlebell swings. And for the kettlebell swings, what I've done is I bought a Moleskin uh, 2021 daily calendar. And on the daily calendar, every day, um, since each page is a day, I'm going to put the number of swings uh, that I do, uh, the kilogram weight of the particular bell, uh, they'll all be two-handed swings. How many kilograms, how many swings, and at what time? Um, I will also... And I'm just not going to care about uh, tracking the uh, the stuff on Strava, because Strava tracks the stuff on Strava. All I'm going to do in that, uh, in that daily uh, year, year a day, day a year... Um, uh, diary is track the number of kettlebell swings because uh, my Atlas 2 doesn't uh, is going out of business so it's not going to do that for me anymore and it was really too much of a pain in the butt uh, the battery went out too quickly so uh, by the time I made sure everything was working uh, my my gym boss intermittent timer was already out of minutes. So I need to make sure everything is as simple as possible. So I can definitely count the number of swings that I do and then jot it into the into the diary. And maybe, you know, at the end of the day, I can count, I can total them up, sum them up. And over the course of the week, I can sum those up and I can sum them up over the month and sum them up over the year and report that on my blog. Anyway, I will come back with my uh, going away aloha, how to contact me segment in one second. Mahalo, nui loa, aloha kako. Uh, be right back. Uh, this is a little bonus little bit that I'm going to put in with regards to the things that I'm using and the things that I'm doing. Like I, I had mentioned very quickly about that book, uh, Get Fit, Get Fierce. It's called Get Fit, Get Fierce with Kettlebell Swings. Uh, just 12 minutes a day to lose weight. Uh, this ebook shows you how to benefit from kettlebell swings as a key to achieving your fitness and weight loss goal. Uh, it's super awesome. And it's about just slowly but surely. This is an addition to some of the books that I really love. Uh, there's a new one um, by Dr. Phil. Uh, his name is Phil Maffetone. And it's brand new, and it's called Get Strong, the Natural No-Sweat Whole Body Approach to Stronger, um, dot, dot, dot. Uh, it, he basically says, our ancestors were physically active with strong muscles and bones. Today, most people on Earth are no longer naturally active or strong. He thinks that, um, like, uh, like uh, the previous guy who the get fit get fierce who believes that every every hour you should do 90 seconds of kettlebell swing uh Phil Maffetone believes that um every time 
quote, my workout is part of my day. I don't change clothes, wear special shoes, drive anywhere, pay a membership, or even get sweaty. It's simple. I don't want to bulk up or enter any weightlifting competitions. I just want to improve overall health and fitness by making my entire body stronger. So what he does is he says... um, He just picks up a weight, stands, holds it, then places it back down and begins the process of getting stronger. So, for example, um, he works during the day and every time he stops doing one thing and transitions to something else, he'll walk over to his barbell and he'll do a bunch of deadlifts or he'll wander to his kettlebell and do a bunch of, uh, of swings but in his case, he'll do heavy swings or heavy lifts, six six heavy lifts. Um, but it's still a really interesting book. It's along the theory, that sort of the Maffetone method, where you do um, you do a you do um, for example in the Get Fierce, Get Fit book, if you add all of the kettlebell swings up there's only 12 minutes of actual intense exercise. If you add this up, he believes that every day, the number of things that you do, whether it's pull-ups, push-ups, lifts, uh, burpees, dead deadlifts, swings, um, whether they're presses or whether you're going to do a... uh, um, I don't know, a clean or a sumo deadlift high pull or whatever you're going to do, a clean and press. You do it uh, like six reps, six heavy reps, and then you move on. Um, But over the course of the entire day, you're definitely going to do more sets than you would at the gym. So I love that theory as well. I also love the Maffetone method. Of running, which is to say that you you just you keep you you keep your you work slow, you run slow for longer, or you row slow for longer. You make sure that you uh, that you keep your heart at what is called a maffetone level. I go into a lot of detail about that in another podcast, and and, and definitely on my website. But that's a great book, the maffetone method. There's another great book that I like. Uh, all these things you can find on on Amazon, called uh, "Row Daily, Breathe Deeper, Live Better," and it's pretty much for old people. But you know, um, it's really good. It just it doesn't train. You can just it's super awesome. Um, basically, it's about breathing. It's about rowing. It's about slow rowing. It's about rowing for sustainability. It's about doing it, but in a way that you can do it every single day for the rest of your life. So, um, you know, doing 5,000 meters or 10,000 meters every day for the rest of your life, but not doing it with the kind of intensity that uh, CrossFit people do. Doing it the kind of, you know, if you will, the kind of intensity one does when renting a rowboat with one's paramour uh, in Central Park and, um, and, and paddling around, uh, with, uh, with the person you care about, uh, or paddle boating on the Potomac or taking a kayak tour on the Potomac, as opposed to being a rower and rowing for speed and distance and intensity, do it, uh, just for, um, deeper breathing, better blood flow, and and just doing something that is not, if you will, the natural sedentariness uh, of our lives. If you spend 45 minutes or an hour rowing gently, rowing slowly, breathing deeply, and, and having your blood flow, if you do that every day for the rest of your life, you're going to be a better person for it. And then finally, um, another great book is... Uh, is slow jogging, and that is uh, the what I'm the most excited about. But I'm not doing it because I'm too heavy. And that book is about by 
uh, Hiroaki Tanaka, who recently passed away, and Magdalena Jakowska, um, and she's Polish. Running is America's most popular participatory sport, yet more than half of those who identify as runners get injured every year, falling prey to injuries from overtraining, faulty form, poor eating, and improper footwear. Many runners eventually and reluctantly abandon the sport for a less strenuous pastime. But for the first time in the United States, uh, hero, um, slow jog- hero's slow jogging demonstrates that there is an efficient, healthier, and pain-free approach to running for all ages and lifestyle. Uh, Tanaka's method of easy running or slow jogging is an injury-free approach to running that helps participants burn calories, lose weight, and even reverse the effects of type 2 diabetes. With easy-to-follow steps and colorful charts, slow jogging teaches runners to enjoy injury-free activity by maintaining a smiling or Nico Nico in Japanese pace that is both easy and enjoyable, landing on mid-foot foot instead of the heel, Choosing shoes with thin, flexible soles and no oversized heel. Aiming for a pace of 180 steps per minute and trying to find time for the activity every day. Uh, so good. Anyway, um, I highly recommend you check out these books. None of them are about going fast, but they're about uh, adding movement and exercise and aerobic exercise and building base and flexibility and a little bit higher uh a little bit higher pulse um without blowing out your doors like i i did sadly when i was at spin no matter what i did i couldn't help myself towards a sustainable long term uh, and and these habits that you can build into your life that can go on into your 85 none of these books are inconsistent with an active lifestyle at 85, 35, 45, 55, 65, or 75. So uh, that's what I recommend. Um, I hope this was useful. And, uh, oh, and my favorite shoes right now for Nico Nico slow jogging, for treadmill, for walking, uh, for everything, is the extremely affordable Adidas Adidas SL20. I thought I was totally into, um, uh, what is it called? Power. Uh, I thought I was into the kind of material that the, I thought I was into the boost material, but this light strike material and this really affordable, you, if you're paying more than $50 for a pair of SL twenties, the first version, then you're getting snookered, uh, highly recommend them. Don't pay more than $60. You can find them on Amazon. I think the version two is less good than the original version. So try to find a pair and enjoy them. Oh, they're also, they start out, I bought them size 13, which is my size. They were a little tight at first. All they took was my putting them on, wearing them around the apartment a little bit, and then they loosened up and now they're like, they're perfect. Anyway, I hope that's helpful. Talk to you soon. I guess now is the closing. I will shoehorn all of this together in one episode. Season 2, Episode 1. Mahalo, and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Welcome back, Season 2, Episode 1, Chris Cast. This is lots of segments. So you're listening to a lot of crazy in-between music, which is, I find, amusing to, like, make most, like, I'd say 25% of the entire podcast is just silly sounds between my yapping. Anyway, I'm Chris Abraham. You can reach me at chrisabraham.com. You can email me at chris at abraham.su. Um, my company is garriscorp.com, G-E-R-R-I-S-C-O-R-P.com, G-E-R-R dot I-S as well. Um, I'm Chris Abraham on Twitter, Chris Abraham on Instagram. Uh, that's the garbage man outside if you can hear that. Um, 
you can my website is chrisabraham.com or abraham.su um if you don't know why i have an su uh top level domain then you don't listen to my podcast which is okay i'll talk about it next time this seems to be going long uh linkedin.com slash in slash chris abraham uh chris dash abraham.com is my tumblr instagram at chris abraham uh facebook.com slash chris abraham youtube.com slash chris abraham calendly.com slash chris abraham slash 15 slash 30 slash 60 um not in a row like calendly.com slash chris abraham slash 15 if you want to schedule a call with me uh, i'll respond to emails and finally my phone number is plus one which is the united states 202 which is dc 352-5051 plus one two oh two three five two five zero five one that's my whatsapp that's my um that is my uh text that is my um that is my signal uh that is also my email uh, sorry my that is also um yeah my text so please feel free to text me uh feel free to call me but if i don't know who you are already or if we don't have a call scheduled then i probably won't answer but if you leave a message and i read it on my google voice and i like it i will call you right back all right anyway thanks for being here i really appreciate it if you can and you want to pimp me i think you can first go to anchor.fm slash chris abraham slash support and you can send me money but if you just want to pimp me uh please go to apple podcasts or stitcher or spotify or wherever you consume your podcasts like uh iheart radio or whatever and uh write a review or or give me stars or likes or thumbs up or subscribe uh, or comment all those things really help all right thank you very much love you guys thanks for listening appreciate it it's a beautiful day here in sexy south arlington and there is a treadmill desk a ski erg and a um uh a uh a red door dragon door red door uh 12 kilogram cast iron russian style kettlebell with my name on it all right thank you very much have a good day and wish me luck with regards to my gluttony ciao <laughs>